the files are labeled, so. Yep, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Glad someone's thinking for me. Okay, who are we missing? I see we've got Councilor Deandrad, Councilor Stafford Lumley is not gonna be with us, so. I believe um, everyone is present and accounted for. I will check to see if uh, we have someone on the attendee side that I need to move over. I see our CAO is here. Hi, Evie. Hello, Evie, welcome. Hi, guys. How are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Pretty good, pretty good. Okay, I there believe we you're ready to go. Okay, well, thank you very much, uh, Corporate Officer. And good evening, everybody, and welcome to the uh, regular council meeting of December 7, 2021, continuing to be held electronically. Uh, at time being 7 p.m., we're going to start the meeting, and we are honored to gather on the unceded territory of the Squamish Nation. And uh, this evening, we have a full agenda and, uh, and uh, an interesting agenda, I'm sure. Um, I will call the meeting to, to order at 7 p.m. And uh, again, I welcome everybody here with staff and uh, members of the audience. Uh, uh, there will be opportunity for questions and participation as we go through the meeting. Uh, I'm going to ask firstly for approval of the minutes that the regular business agenda of December 7, 2021 be adopted. Thank oh, you. Sir, you skipped ahead, Mayor Beamish. Sorry? Don't, don't we have to take approval of the agenda? Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, yes, I, I was looking at 2.1. We will do approval agenda. So I uh, call for approval agenda. So we'll move the agenda. Thank you, Councilor Dean Drad, Councilor Kroll. Now, regular council agenda of December 7th. Uh, move the minutes. No, that's, uh, that's what we're doing, actually, Councillor Kroll. You got me confused there now. That's, that's what we're doing, the regular business agenda of December 7th. But we've done that. Good. Okay. So now we'll go to the minutes of the regular meeting of December 16th uh, that they be adopted. Somebody choose to move that. Councillor D'Andrade, Councillor Kroll again. Thank you very much. Yeah, good. Any business arising on those sets of agendas, Council? Seeing none, thank you. I will mention uh, to everybody here that uh, uh, Councillor Stafford Lumley is not with us tonight. Uh, so that uh, we, we do have Evie Clark, a youth counselor, and uh, the rest of council is here. So that uh, we are present. Um, we'll go down to proclamations then. This is kind of different uh, under proclamations tonight. And I'm gonna ask if uh, a corporate officer, if you could bring some people forward with us. Uh, if you could bring over, uh, uh, first of all, bring Colton uh, yes, sir. Rockford. Yeah, to join us. Uh, hold on, he he's having trouble getting in. Just one okay. moment. I want to do Evie Clark first, and I will bring Colton in. And then we'll have Dr. Mickey McCartney come forward, and the uh, representative uh, from the um, Gibson's Rotary Club, please. Yeah. Okay, just one moment. Thank you. Oh, um, Colton just texted me. He said that he hasn't got a link yet. I'm trying to get it to him. I'm having trouble doing that. It's sending me somewhere strange. So normally I don't have a problem, but today I'm having a problem. Good. There we go. Oh, never mind. I just got it. Oh, no. Yeah, good. Okay. Technology is wonderful. <laughs> okay. Hopefully he can join us. Just give him a moment maybe to come in. Yeah, we will for sure. Mayor Beamish, has there been an updated agenda sent out between our community, the whole meeting, and this one? No, the in-camera agenda was updated, but not the regular. Yeah, yeah. And Dr. McCartney, uh, Mickey McCartney, is she there, Rebecca? She is. I'll move her over. Thank you. And also the representative from the Chamber yes. of the Gibson's Rotary. 
Awesome. Yes, Luke Borstermans is also joining you. Good. Okay. Great, Luke. Thank you. And I'm hoping that yeah. Colton got my link okay. Yeah. There's Luke. So, uh, Mickey, how are you guys? Is there any chance, yeah. Evie, is there any chance you can forward the link you used to Colton? So oh, there he is now. Has he arrived? Yep. Is he on the attendee side? Okay. He's in the attendee. I'll move him over. There he is. There we are. Good. We have everyone present. And okay. Covered. Thank you. Boyfriend. Here you are, Colton. We see you uh, now. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Well, thanks everybody for being here as well. Appreciate it. Very much appreciate your time. And uh, it's our honor tonight to actually welcome a new student on council. And we'll get to that very shortly, Colton Rockford. Uh, this is an opportunity to both to redo the oath of office for uh, E.V. Clark and for Colton Rockford tonight. But before we do, I just want to acknowledge that the Gibson Student, Student on Council program is unique. It was started in 2019 for the 2019-2020 year. And uh, it, it very, or sorry, 2018-2019 school year is when we started. And um, at this present time, it is still, as far as we know, the only council in British Columbia who is doing this. Um, we intend to promote that a little bit more widely, I hope, in the spring to our to our uh, different organizations that we associate with and maybe get on the agenda to talk about it because everybody has questions when we mention it and everybody thinks it's very positive, but nobody has yet taken the bold step of, uh, of uh, trying to do it. Um, the Gibson Student on Council program was introduced as a way to provide an opportunity to include and involve students on council as a youth representative, the students will provide youth perspective on matters being considered at council and committee meetings, raise awareness of the positive contributions of youth in the community and advocate for and on behalf of youth in the town of Gibsons. Our youth representatives are co-sponsored by the Gibsons Rotary Club and they are provided with an honorarium for attending council meetings and committee meetings with the funds placed in an education reserve for the student and paid at the end of their term. Uh, this evening we'll also have the pleasure of uh, extending this program to include the participation of Capilano University. That's the second part of our introduction here. So. Uh, Luke, on behalf of the Rotary Club, I want to thank you and let you in a, in a minute to say a few words. So first of all, what I want to do, and I'm going to do this first, I'm going to swear the oath to uh, Evie Clark, and uh, just so that we, we do this in a formal way so that they have a, a memory of this and that it's part of their process, uh, so that um, uh, it's very similar to the oath that council members take. Uh, when they come into office. So, um, Evie, I'm just going to get you to repeat after me. Uh, I, Evie Clark, do solemnly affirm. I, Evie Clark, do solemnly affirm. I am a student and I'm qualified to be appointed to the position of youth counselor for the town of Gibsons. I'm a student and I'm qualified to be appointed to the position of a youth counselor for the town of Gibson. As a youth counselor, I commit to attending council meetings and committee meetings when I'm available and to participating in the discussion of matters under consideration. As a youth counselor, I commit to attending council meetings and committee meetings when, I'm a, when I am available and to participate in the discussion of matters under consideration. In so doing, I will provide a youth perspective into decisions. And in so doing, I will provide a youth perspective into decision. I will endeavor to raise awareness of the many positive contributions of youth in our community and to inform them about council initiatives and activities. I will endeavor to raise awareness of the many positive contributions of youth in our community and to 
inform them about the council initiatives and activities. If in performing my duties as youth counselor, I become aware of any matter that I have a direct or indirect interest in that constitutes a conflict under the community charter, I will disclose that interest to council and will not participate in the discussion or consideration of the matter. If in performing my duties as youth counselor, I become aware of any matter that I have direct or indirect interest in that constitutes a conflict under the community charter, I will disclose that interest to council and I will not participate in the discussion or consideration of the matter. Thank you, Evie. Now, Evie is uh, in her second term now with us. She was the alternate youth counselor last year, and she now is a grade 12 student at Elphinstone and has become our youth counselor. And she is, when she's available, uh, attends our meetings and, as I say, participates uh, in the discussions. And uh, we really appreciate that. It's been a very positive uh, addition to our council to have youth present with us. Uh, I'm going to now ask uh, Councillor Kroll who's actually uh, uh, been very involved in coordinating this program with School District 46 and with the students. I'm going to ask Councillor Kroll to swear the oath with um, uh, Colin Rockford. Thank you, Mr. Beamish. Um, and I don't know whether I did forward a copy of this to Colton, but I don't know, as it was rather last minute, whether he's had an opportunity to receive it. Because I yeah. noticed that Evie did have the benefit yeah. of... Uh, yeah. Being able to read it. Should I so, ever send a photo? Yeah, I have a copy. You okay, have a copy? great. Thank, thank you for the clarification. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to do this. So, Colton, if you'd repeat after me. All right. Are you ready? Yep. I, Colton Rockford, do solemnly affirm that. I, Colton Rockford, do solemnly affirm that. I am a student and I am qualified to participate on to the position of alternate youth counselor for the town of Gibsons. I am a student and I am qualified to be appointed to the position of alternate youth counselor for the town of Gibsons. As alternate youth counselor. As alternate youth counselor. I commit to attending council meetings and committee meetings when I'm called upon. I commit to attending council meetings and committee meetings when I am called upon. And to participate in the discussion of matters under consideration. And to participate in the discussion of council, meter, council matters under consideration. And in doing so, I will provide a youth perspective into decisions. And in doing so, I will provide a youth perspective into decisions. I will endeavor to raise awareness of the many positive contributions of youth in our community. I will endeavor to raise awareness of the many positive contributions of youth in our community. And to inform them about council in initiatives and activities. And to inform them about council initiatives and activities. If in performing my duties as alternate youth counselor. If in performing my duties as alternate youth counselor. I become aware of any matters that I have a direct or indirect interest in, in that, in that constitu constitutes a conflict under the community charter. I become aware of any matter that I have a direct or indirect interest in that constitutes a conflict under the community charter. I will disclose that interest to council and will not participate in the discussion or consideration of the matter. I will disclose that interest to the council and will not participate in the discussion or consideration of the matter. Thank you very much, Colton. And um, we look forward to working with you. I'm so glad you didn't have, we didn't have to deal with that word pecuniary. <laughs> <laughs> Colton and Evie, thank you. And uh, um, Luke, I'll let you say a few words on behalf of Rotary if you wish. Uh, thanks, uh, uh, Bill, Mayor Beamish. <laughs> um, I love this program. You know, um, we, of course, do this, the scholarship program at the high school, and, and that's great, too. But what I love about this program, it's immediate. And we've got two students here who represent a certain aspect of our community, and they're actually sitting at the table where governing is happening. And so like with a scholarship, you kind of have to wait until they learn it all. <laughs> and then they graduate and we, and we use their talents. But 
What I like about this program is that right here in real time, these two students have an opportunity to see how government works, to see how leadership works. And boy, we all know that there is a dire need for leadership in the, in the world today, considering everything that's going on. And to see these two students kind of uh, raise their hand and say, I wanna be part of the solution, uh, to me adds a certain amount of immediacy to this program. So I'm really glad that the Gibson's Rotary Club is part of this. And it also reminds me of something, Bill, that you were talking about, that you need to provide more exposure to this. And I'm assuming you're thinking to the mayors. But you know, we should actually be advertising this within the world of Rotary too, yes, because the Rotary clubs could be approaching councils across BC mm -hmm. and saying, hey, th this is what you guys could build on, what we've created here in Gibson. So again, Gibson's is right up there. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. Evie and, uh, and Colton, and um, I appreciate you guys uh, raising your hands and kind of getting at the table. Luke, thank you very much. And uh, you're, you're coming as new incoming president this year for Rotary? Uh, I am the new president now. You are the new president. Yeah, I look the Rotary, same, so. but I'm new. <laughs> <laughs> so perhaps uh, there'll be an opportunity in this coming year for Evie and Colton to come and actually come to a Rotary meeting yeah. and uh, yeah. talk about their experience. Absolutely. I'll put that on my calendar. That's a that promise. That would be great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we have another unique honor tonight, and that is the, uh, the participation with us with Capilano University. And uh, Mickey McCartney is here with us. I should say Dr. McCartney. I didn't realize that, Mickey, until I saw that sign there tonight. So, And uh, thank you very much for, for being here with us. Um, again, this is a unique program uh, with the uh, Capilano University. Um, we are entering into a memorandum of understanding with that. And um, Colton and Evie, I don't know if you've got a copy of the MOU. It is on our, our agenda package tonight, uh, so you will be able to locate it. But uh, perhaps, Mickey, would you mind saying a few words about it, as to what it, uh, what it means? Oh, thank you very much, Mayor Beamish. I'm really thrilled to be here using Councillor Curl's word. It's thrilling to be participating in this work together. And uh, I'm calling in today from the Seashelf Nation uh, territory and uh, very pleased to be here uh, on behalf of uh, Capilano University, particularly our, our um, VP Academic, Lorene Stiles, and my very good colleague, the Dean of Faculty of Global and Commun Community Communication uh, Studies, who helped us put together this MOU. It's a, it's a wonderful opportunity to see both you, uh, Colton and Evie here, uh, participating in local government from your voices. I, I, I wonder if in 10, 15 years, you'll realize how important this work uh, mm -hmm. that you've embarked on will, will uh, be and how the effect will be in your choices as you move forward. I just wonder, I think it's a, pr a pretty profound moment. I have never heard of anything like this. And at Capilano, we certainly look forward to you uh, serving your time and then coming to us uh, for the well-earned and deserved uh, credit that you'll receive from Capilano University uh, for this work. And um, again, having the voice of youth at local government is pretty important to our communities here on the Sunshine Coast. And I just really uh, want to acknowledge the, this council for all the good work here in the Rotary on this very uh, significant uh, leadership initiative. Thank you, Mickey. And I'm just going to read a few words uh, from the uh, Memorandum of Understanding. I won't read the whole thing. But in, in terms of the background and objectives, it says, whereas Capitoline University and the town of Gibsons share similar interests, concerns, and goals in valuing learning and how learning contributes positively to individual and communities on the Sunshine Coast, this MOU is established in the interest of collaboration mutual benefit and interest specifically assigning Capilano University course-based credit to high school students participating as youth representatives on council in Gibsons in accordance with the position's current terms of reference. The goal of the MOU is to establish approaches for allocating university credit for the youth representatives of the town of Gibsons. The university affirms that the details of the youth representative terms of reference indicating the learning experiences and time commitments are equivalent to six course credits. And it goes on to describe those in the appendix and other information. They say a copy of this MOU is on your, uh, in your agenda package. And um, 
I'm going to arrange uh, a separate time with uh, Dr. McCartney to sign this and uh, to have it officially signed uh, as part of our record. But this is again, another unique step forward in this particular program. And uh, uh, I think we are at that point in time where we having taken this, experienced this with now, Councillor Kroll, how many students have we had? Six? Six. With, yeah, there, if I may, sir, there just um, yeah. one more thing I'd like to add, if I may. Um, a, a couple of things. The town of Gibson very kindly um, made a donation to the Royal Canadian Marine Search and Rescue for a youth program we were conducting through the elementary school. And with COVID, we had to um, sort of abandon the project temporarily. It'll start up again. But we did have some funds left over in our budget. So to that end, there is now a plaque in the lobby of the town hall. It has all the youth councillors' names on it. Um, the cooperation between the town of Gibsons and Rotary. We'll have to get the plaque sent out to get Colton's name put on it. But um, the plaque was paid for out of the funds that were donated by the town to the Royal Canadian Marine Search and Rescue, who paid it back. Um, just one other thing, 53 years ago, a friend of mine did a documentary series with CBC called Through the Eyes of Tomorrow. And it's a line that I use shamelessly uh, as often as I can, because I think it's so important that in governing, we utilize the eyes of tomorrow uh, with Evie and Colton at our table. Um, it's very sad that items that were being produced 53 years ago in that documentary series are only being addressed now. One of the documentaries they did was Air of Death on the impact of fossil fuels on climate and the environment. Um, so I welcome perhaps with you being at the governing table, we might have a, a bigger impact sooner, but I welcome you and really thank you for your stepping forward. Yeah, and we look forward to your participation this year with some of the youth counselors we've had before have gone on to do other things. Uh, one of whom actually became the alternative director for the regional district for Area E and uh, worked with uh, Donna McMahon in that capacity. So thank you again, Luke. Thank you very much for attending. Uh, Mickey, I really appreciate that. Uh, Councilor Dean Drad, you have something to add? Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I would like just to thank uh, everyone for this participation and welcome Colton and welcome Evie again for the second round. And to me, it's very exciting to have uh, the particip participation of youth. I think it makes uh, council more accountable, like uh, Councilor Curl brought. You know, many of the issues that many people know have not been addressed and it's just starting to be attempt to address now. And I think this is a dishonor to our youth. I frankly think about that. So having youth sitting at this table is a real reminder that we are here to do good policy, not for the adults <laughs> on the table, but for the next generation. So I really appreciate having you here. And I really hope that this year's participation is gonna be even more intense. <laughs> Thank you. Councilor Ludwig. I think everything's already been said, but yeah, I just wanted to welcome Colton to the to the team. We really appreciate having him here and, and I'm sure you'll be a great contribution to the group as well. Um, I just wanna encourage both of you to feel free to put your hand up and speak up as, as often as you'd like. We're, we're a kind group, so don't hesitate. Uh, we're very interested in hearing your perspective. So thank you very much for, for joining our, our council and I, I look forward to working with you. And, and thank you, Luke and, and Mickey, as well, for your participation in this program. It really is a, uh, an eye forward to how we need to be doing business in the future. So thank you. Yeah. And thank you, everybody, for participation. And now we're going to get on with our meeting. Well, actually, no, we're not going to. I'm going to let uh, Evie and Colton say a few words that they would like to. Would you Would you feel free? Uh, Evie, you're, you're the experienced person here. Would you show the way for Colton? Um, I didn't have anything in mind that I want to say, but yeah, I'm excited to see what 
we come up with this year, what we're talking about. It's been, I've learned so much. I really had no idea all the work that um, is put behind, like planning everything um, in our community. Yeah, I'm just excited to see what could happen. And it's fun working with Colton. So thanks so much for joining me, yeah. Colton. And yeah, I'll see what we have to do. Yeah. Colton, over to you. What are your big plans for the year now? <laughs> Well, you guys seem really excited to have me, so I'm excited to be here. I'm happy to share my view with you guys, and I'm happy to fill the role. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, you know, the, it, for those who are watching and observing, the way we structure this is that Evie, uh, who is now our grade two, 12 student, becomes our youth rep council representative, and uh, Colton, the grade 11 student, becomes the alternate. So if Evie can't make a meeting, uh, Colton would be invited to be there, expected to be there, and uh, and then next year Colton becomes the the representative, and we look for another grade eleven student to fill in behind him. So that uh, it's a it's a it's a good program, and I think that we have worked out uh, the kinks in it, and it's time now to sell it to others and to promote it. So thank you for that. Okay, well thank you everybody, and I will get on with the agenda. So you're welcome to stay through the meeting. So. But we're going to go down to the next item on the agenda is actually inquiries. And this is where we invite uh, anybody to ask any questions about items that are on the agenda for council consideration tonight so that we might uh, have the benefit of your inquiry before we make a decision. So over to the corporate officer. Yes, if anyone, oh, we have a hand up already. I was going to say, if anyone wishes to share, you put your hand up. We have one. Coming over, Mary Catherine Anderson will be joining you. Mary Catherine, I think you're still mu muted. Hello. Yes, I hear you now. Hi, good evening. Thank you, Mayor and Council, and welcome, student councillors. Um, I realize what you just said about inquiries relating to this evening's agenda. Right. Um, I would hope that we'd be able to demonstrate um, problem solving collectively and together, especially with the student body here. Um, Mayor Beamish, I'm not sure if my inquiry relates directly to the agenda this evening, um, but I do need to inform you and counselors that um, I have located the ghost stormwater diversion issue that is occurring. That doesn't show up in any of the town plans. That's servicing Upper Gibson's development and bringing down the Charmin watershed into the Chaster tributary. Um, it's because from 2007 to 2000, 2015, the town's official community plans was to run a trunk diversion, a storm pipe, east, yeah. all the way over to North Road and down School Road to the ocean at a cost of $4 million. Yeah, Mary Catherine, unless it's an inquiry, uh, please ask your question because that's what this session is for. My inquiry is, will the council take motion to look at this issue in a legitimate and real way? Just because it doesn't exist on any of the town plans as it is, doesn't mean that it isn't happening. And the fact that it doesn't exist raises a big red flag for all councillors. Um, we uh, were victims of the big floods in mid-November and the creek that you're using is washed out. We no longer have the carrying capacity. We're urgently requesting that the town take actions to help alleviate the situation, such as allowing Parkland to use their one in 100 year storm pond that they have and let the water come in. Um, I have specific information that you need to know about. Okay. Okay. And I can Mayor. give it to you another evening. Yeah. I'm not Mayor. here to, I'm not 
here to be antagonistic or you know anything the fact is is that we're experiencing a large problem multiple people and multiple groups are now on this we have yet to receive any collaborative participation from the town of Gibsons and I would like to have some kind of commitment from mayor and council that this will be addressed in a formal capacity. Okay. okay, well, thank you for your question. I know that our CAO is preparing a response to you along with our director of, of um, infrastructure. And I also know that uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, your um, um, representative must inform you that the SCRD has also assigned staff to work on this and the uh, DALCAN report from 2019, which is a, which was the stormwater study in 2019 is also, I'm sure has been forwarded to you by now. So, so thank you for that. And okay. uh, well, I, I, you should know that our stream bank erosion is significant. Our cr yeah. the creek is only three feet, but on our side, it's 12 feet. Yeah, I think and I, this, I am in, I am in contact with the regional yeah. water manager. Yeah. And this is, yeah. this puts the town into a situation of non-compliance with the water sustainability regulations. Yeah. So thank, thank, I, thank, thank you for your question, Mary take Catherine. this matter seriously yeah. and engage in a responsible manner. So I hope that come the, the December 21st meetings, this is an agenda item. And I ask that you do that. Thank you for your question. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay, are there further questions this evening? If anyone else has a question, please raise your hand. I see no further hands raised, Mayor Beamish. Okay, thank you very much. We'll, we'll move forward on our agenda then. The next item on our agenda is the Committee of the Whole uh, for November 16th. Uh, first of all, could I have a uh, motion to receive all minutes, reports, and recommendations and correspondence uh, on the agenda tonight? Councilor Kroll, thank you. Councilor Dindrad, thank you. Uh, all in favor? Thank you very much. Um, so the first item is the uh, Committee of the Whole meeting in 2016, uh, 7.1.2, uh, Director of Finance Grants and Assistance Policy. Uh, this is a recommendation for the amendment to the policy um, and that uh, the amendments are there. Council recalls that. The big change here is the addition of a 2% inflationary factor to be applied each year to the grants of assistance budget item, and including to the other amendments uh, of the, in the um, uh, policy. Uh, Council uh, wish to move that? Councillor Kroll, Councillor Ladwig, uh, discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Thank you very much. Um, the Holland Lands uh, revitalization. Hey. Sorry, Councilor Dean Dry. It's just an educational piece here. I'm not sure if youth counselors they are aware that the reason we probably not discussing anything because this has come into discussion in the committee of the whole. It's just for you understand. So right. we exhausted all the discussion. So there's nothing new. So the, I, I think you may see that during council meetings, many times we just accept accept, accept, because we already went through some discussions. So. Yeah, did you guys already talk about this stuff five years ago? You said 2016? No, no, no. In a, in a meeting like uh, that we had uh, last week, right? Yeah, this no, oh, November right. 16th. November, November 16th. 16th. Yeah. On the Committee of the Whole. Yeah. yeah. Councilor Kroll. Thank you, Mayor Beamish. Um, and I was trying to get your attention before we voted on it. I was just going to suggest that rather than it being a fixed 2% inflationary factor, that an inflationary factor that reflects the annual rate of inflation be incorporated into it, because it, it could vary. And I know from different meetings that I've been at with you at, um, at other locations, you have been sort of said, well, the inflation rate isn't 2%. It's 1.37 or whatever. So I just thought it, it might be better if it was rather than just a flat 
2%, did it actually reflect the annual rate of inflation? But so we you're... voted on it, so it is yeah. what it is for the moment. Okay. Okay. Uh, Councilor Ludwig? I appreciate what Councilor Kroll is bringing up, but I thought we talked about this. Did, and didn't we kind of agree just on a kind of 2% as a middle ground average kind of that we would try for the time being? Does that ring a bell for uh, In terms of setting it in policy at this time, yeah. 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 Okay, thank you. Um, 7.2 is a Holland Land Cultural Corner Revitalization Select Committee uh, minutes, November 24th and uh, the recommendation that those minutes be received. They are in your agenda package. Councillor Kroll, thank you. Councillor Dindrad, thank you. Any discussion of those minutes? Any questions before we move forward? Seeing none, all in favor? Thank you. And the advisory design panel, December 1, 2021. Uh, the minutes of the advisory design, design panel held December 21, well, they've been received. We've already received all the minutes. Uh, so we will go down into the agenda. There will be some items coming from that, I'm sure. So so that uh, we'll go on to the next item, which is the uh, Chief Administrative Officer, UBCM Community Emergency Preparedness Fund. And uh, invite the uh, CIO to bring that forward. Thank you, Your Worship. The um, report that you see in front of you is actually a, a, a retroactive request for council support. Uh, we did talk about this uh, prior to the, the deadline. Um, it was a, a pending deadline to meet the UBCM uh, requirements. Uh, the Sunshine Coast Regional District and District of Seashelt had uh, previously submitted similar evacuation plans for jurisdiction uh, areas within their jurisdiction. And um, it's 100% uh, grant funding, so there's uh, no budget imp implications. Uh, there's no town funds required. Um, the administration of it will be done in conjunction with uh, Sunshine Coast Regional District, um, Matt, uh, Trite has uh, agreed to perform those services along with uh, Chief Michael, who had a, I'd like to uh, publicly uh, thank because he worked uh, on the 11th hour to put this application together to meet the deadline and also uh, our corporate officer who um, tweaked it to meet the UBC UBCM guidelines. So um, I think it's a, a great initiative to utilize these funds uh, for this area of the town. So I, as, as I said, it was a, bit of a, a retroactive request given the, the deadline pending. Yeah. In discussion with UBCM, they they will accept uh, the council resolution after after the fact. Yeah. Councilor Kroll, you have your hand up. Yes, my reasons. Thank you. No, I just want to extend um, the thanks to staff and um, and Chief Michaels because this. Um, came up at the regional district agenda when you, I believe it was the weekend, you went to Ottawa. And um, I, I sort of sent the pages to staff. And then I think when I got back to the town hall, it was discovered that there was this, or um, the CAO at the, of the RD came to me at lunchtime and said, you knew there was a deadline for that, but we're working on trying to get it through. So it was really, you know, it was a last minute play and staff are really to be commended and especially the thanks from Chief Michaels because it, um, it it at least puts everyone together on the Sunshine Coast to work with the funding to um, make this project um, applicable. The other thing um, just to mention would be the regional district have launched their emergency alert um, app, which I would certainly encourage people to um, download it's um, at your app store or your Google store, and um, it's um, well worth having. Thank you. Councilor Dean Dredd. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, I, I read, so I understand this is specific for the bluff, and I understand why, but I'm just curious, is the SCRD doing for the entire area? I mean, the Upper Gibsons, 
uh, or how how this is this will be unfolding. Did you want me to address that, Mr. Mayor? Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Um, the uh, Sunshine Coast Regional District Acts used uh, Egmont area in their application, given the, the isolated location. Okay, thank you. And um, I'm sorry, I don't know what the district, district of Seashell did. Mm -hmm. So there's a recommendation there that the council support the current proposed activities of the Gibson Bluff evacuation plan as presented in the 2021 application form submitted to UBCM's Community Emergency Preparedness Fund and that the overall grant management be prov provided. Somebody care to make that recommendation? Council Dean Drad, Council Kroll. Uh, further discussion? All in favor? Thank you very much. Um, 8.2. Uh, this is the form and character development permit decision for cluster residential development at 834 Park Road. I invite Kirsten Rockins, the planner, to come forward. Thank you, Mayor. I'll share my screen. Um, can I confirm everyone can see the report <laughs> or the presentation, rather? Okay. Um, so this report seeks a decision of council on issuing the form and character development permit for the 28 unit, unit cluster residential development uh, proposed at 834 Park Road. And don't know why, oh, there we go. If I click over there, it works. The property is a uh, 1.7 acre lot fronting Park Road, just south of Reed Road. And the zoning of the property is uh, the RCL cluster residential as recently amended. And I'm just wondering if I, oh, I did not miss, sorry. Um, as the pro proposal is quite fresh in council's mind, having been reviewed by the committee of the whole on September 7th of this year and with zoning amendment, the zoning amendment for the proposal adopted recently on November 16th, um, I'll provide just a brief refresher on the form and character review and then turn the discussion over to council for a decision on the form and character in relation to development permit area number eight guidelines. So the uh, proposal in summary includes 28 ground oriented units within 10 buildings um, and the buildings have two and three units each with um, in nesting doll form the unit sizes being uh, one to three bedrooms each. The site is accessed from a new road off of Park Road at the north end of the site and a central driveway provides access to, the, um, to parking for the units. The site plan shows the propo proposed organization of the development along a central laneway with vehicle and bicycle parking and shared outdoor spaces located between the two rows of units. The amenity spaces include a common outdoor space and play area and a communal gardening space at the end of the property. A three meter, three meter trail dedication, a public trail at the south of the property um, was provided through a community community amenity contribution and will provide additional pedestrian access linking the site with the neighborhood. Um, per a recommendation by the advisory design panel, individual pedestrian accesses will also now connect the front row of units with Park Road. The units vary in their designs with five floor plans repeated once each in the development and adapted for the location of each dwelling on the property. Um, the massing of each cluster is broken visually with variation in the roof lines and use of architectural and finishing details. As shown in these two views from the lane, um, six small garages with sheltered bicycle parking are located on the lane. Uh, pedestrian paths connect the units with one another as well as with parking and public outdoor spaces and along with the with landscape plantings provide gentle definition between the public and private front yard spaces. This excerpt of the landscape plan, um, shown at right, uh, shows the proposed all ages outdoor common space at the center of the property. The space would be connected with the site by sidewalks and is bounded by shrubs, trees, and perennial plantings. Bench seating is provided along with the children's play space and a tricycle track. The top image on this slide shows the community garden gardening space proposed at the south of the lot adjacent to the public trail and a fence and planting screening the gardening area from the trail are proposed in the landscape plan. The bottom illustration shows a conceptual view of the play area. Those are not the actual features that would be used. 
This illustration uh, shows the planned exterior lighting of the buildings, which is downward oriented for low spill and glare. And the extensive landscape plan for the property includes a planting list with deciduous, coniferous, and broadleaf evergreen trees, shrubs, and perennials. Deciduous trees are located adjacent buildings and outdoor amenity spaces to provide seasonal heating and cooling benefits. And low shade tolerant plantings are used between buildings to, to allow access and airflow, as was a concern in a previous meeting. Um, as noted, the form and character of the proposal in relation to the development permit area eight guidelines were discussed at the September 7th committee of the whole meeting. In this meeting, the committee expressed support for the beautiful design and original building configuration, quote, not your typical block of townhouses, um, for creation of a potentially lower cost cluster housing development, for family orientation of the development, provision of amenities, including the children's play area and community gardening space, and also for the use of trees to provide heating and cooling of the buildings and outdoor spaces. Concerns raised by members of the committee included the three meter separation between the buildings being smaller than we typically see and potential impacts in terms of privacy, access and or air, airflow for climate cooling. I should just clarify that smaller than we typically see for multi-family developments. Um, the committee acknowledged that a consideration that consideration of a revision to increase the space between units would be at the cost of units provided. Uh, also raised was a concern about the orientation of the project around vehicle parking and interest in whether the parking could be prov provided underground. In response to the committee members' concerns, the applicants noted that parking is all to be permeable with differentiated um, design that is expected to slow vehicle movement and have a friendly appearance and that windows will all be able to open and that low shrub plantings between the buildings will permit to, uh, air to flow easily between. The committee did not provide any recommendations of changes to improve the form and character uh, of the proposal. So staff recommendations, um, finding that the form and character guidelines are well addressed in the proposal and that the recommendations of the advisory design panel were addressed with revisions to the proposal prior to review by committee of the whole. And further that the committee did not request any further changes to the design. Staff recommends approval of the development permit subject to an updated landscape plan to include individual pedestrian accesses to the units on front road, or sorry, on park road. If uh, council finds that additional changes should be required, these can be added as further conditions of approval. Thank you very much. I'll turn the floor over to council to discuss and note that applicant Alex Ayin and the project architects Rosa Salcida and Lynn Ramos are once again with us and available to answer any further questions. Thank you very much, Christian. I'll let you put back, thank you. And if council wants any of those slides put back, we can do that. Uh, Council, do you have any questions uh, for, for our planner or for the uh, developer who's in, who's in the building? No. Councillor Ladwig. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chris, for that report. I, I don't know if this is the time to do this now, I mean, at this point, but it's hard to tell it, from the photos, it doesn't look like there's that many trees, but then I know I'm trying to look at the landscape plan and it's hard on my little screen to try to figure out how many trees are actually there. Um, so I, I think it could possibly just be misleading on my screen, but um, it just doesn't seem like enough trees, like and not enough height and not enough big trees. I know at one point we talked with the director of infrastructure about our, you know, the concept that the town is gonna start exploring tree canopy and, and sort of start incorporating larger trees into our landscape plans. And maybe this is just a comment more broadly for developments like this as we move forward, but I would like to see bigger trees incorporated into our designs. <laughs> you know, like nice tree lined streets that uh, cities often develop over time. And I'm just not sure that these species necessarily grow to that size and give us any kind of real height and, character. Christian, you want to respond? I don't know if you can respond to that. Maybe just Sorry, a I am, I was trying to pull up the um, landscape plan for a, I don't know that I have it right in front of me, but there are, if one looks closely at the landscape plan, 
a, a number of trees, I suppose, is relative, but along the boundaries within the property on um, on the north side, some the trees in the road dedication are meant to be retained until a road goes through. Additionally, along the north edge of the property line, it is um, pretty densely treed in a, a buffer strip. Um, and along the trail, as well as street trees on Park Road and within the site. So um, I suppose that can be seen in the attachments that have the landscape, mm -hmm. the planting plan, but it is very highly detailed. <laughs> yeah, it's just hard to read. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's all it is. Um, I'll leave it at that. I, I just, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Cool. Thank you. Um, just to Councillor Ladwig's um, thing, because it's something that came up again uh, last week at the uh, advisory design panel, is that, you know, architects submit, uh, architects and developers tend to submit renderings which show the, show the project and not the trees. There are software packages available that you can actually put in the plantings and show time lapse of what they'll look like in five years, what they'll look like in 10 years. Um, but it, it, it's awkward because, you know, the developer and the architect are trying to show one thing and they're not showing big trees. They're showing trees probably about the size of what they would be planted when the landscaping is completed. Kirsten. Um. Chris, I see the landscape plan on L1 of our agenda package. Is that the one you're looking at? No, it's 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 not on a. Maybe, let me see if it's if I got another page number for it. Fifty-three, fifty, fifty-four of uh, of our agenda package, and it does seem to show on that plan. It shows some trees, pictures of trees as well as it uh, appears to be showing trees around the border of the project that uh, are taking up some space. Is that? Yeah, so there is a planting plan, and I'm sorry, I, I can only manage so many files open at once, but on the yeah. planting plan, there's a tree schedule. I'm also looking at the planting um, estimate, and it indicates 76 trees. Okay. okay. Uh, Councilor Ludwig? That, that's fine. I'll, I'll drop it for today and for this proposal. It just is making me realize that maybe in the future, maybe as part of this, our initiative and our our natural assets planning, it would be good if we actually one day had a conversation about whether or not we want to actually identify certain tree species to line boulevards. I realize that's a conversation mm -hmm. we've never had, but it might be worthwhile for us to have that conversation because it can add real um, uh, diversity and beauty to a community if we, if we started to think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor Kroll. Um, again, to Councillor Ladwig's issue, um, it would probably be, we had a presentation at Council probably over a year ago on trees and public spaces and the in-ground infrastructure to ensure their success. Um, too often we see trees get planted and then the roots start heaving sidewalks or heaving parking lots. And at the end of the day, the tree is the loser. And I don't know currently within the capacity of our guidelines to developers who are paying for this, whether that additional cost of infrastructure is, is potentially there. Um, something that I think needs to be addressed in that context because you know, um, Councillor Dandretti is working on the tree bylaw. You know, tree canopy is incredibly important, but if every 10 years you have to cut the trees down because they're doing so much damage, you know, we need to sort of get ahead of it, I think, and ensure that we have the proper infrastructure to support continuing vegetation, successful growth. Councillor Dandretti. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I fully agree. I obviously I was quite happy to see you know the deciduous trees because they play this important role, right? During winter, they they don't have foliage, and so it doesn't get the place too cold. And during summer, 
they have the nice canopy. But I, I agree, it would be nice to have an idea because we are we are putting a lot of restrict restriction on people cutting tree and therefore emphasizing the, the the value of a tree. So to have this in the drawings would be uh, relevant. And and I agree uh, in terms of taking into consideration the whole root development, especially in a in a development like that that is from basically from scratch, right? You're not developing an existing. Uh, uh, area that has already all pavement. So I think these are important considerations too. And I hope the planning department, maybe next development has some already some answers for, for council. That would be lovely. Kirsten? Sure. Um, answers in turn, there's a few pieces I picked up on. Um, I, I suppose I can provide some of this is outside of the planning area because it falls under tree bylaw and um, mm -hmm. frontage design. I know our bylaws require that these kind of specifications be given by a landscape architect. Um, and, and the tree bylaw does provide some structure around that, including recommended tree lists or acceptable tree lists for um, street trees, although I don't think it goes as far as choosing the species for certain streets or anything in that detail. So I just wanted to provide that and that your comments are well taken. Councillor Ledwig. No, I just wanted to thank Kirsten for that. That was a really valuable comment. And just, just for future discussion, maybe we should have a conversation about whether or not as a community we want to start having like certain streets, certain boulevards, you know, uh, have certain trees identified that we want to have growing down the boulevard because it looks very aesthetically pleasing when you do, like we have down on Marine Drive, which unfortunately now, as Councillor DeAndretti has mentioned, some are dying and that getting cut down, or Councillor Cole mentioned it, but this concept of having a continuation of, of the same species going along for, for a set period of time is very attractive. Mm -hmm. It just made me realize that, you know, on this particular street, like Park Road, for example, could be a nice street where we could have that continuation of large overarching trees. So anyways, I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. Um, mm -hmm. Councillor Kroll first. Thank you, Mary Beamish. Um, I, I would just um, suggest to staff, if possible, if we could draw the information from that presentation we had and provide it to the mm -hmm. developer that in their planting, working with their landscape architect, that, you know, because this ultimately is going to be a strata corporation. So having the high cost of having bring, getting tree per permits and bringing in arborists to deal with problem trees, if they can circumvent the issue um, from the get-go and ensure that the trees that they're planting have some longevity without causing damage to the project would be useful. Councilor Dean Dredd. Thank you. Yes, uh, I was going to make a comment um, in, uh, more, uh, with regards to the presentation we had, but I think what I would, would be at least useful I think to council is to understand how the planning department can incorporate that and when the developer comes to develop this be incorporated in and perhaps it's part of I mean I, I don't know how far is the obligation that the developer plan trees accordingly but I agree if, if you know if we're gonna do it we have to do it right so I think that's yeah that's really important. My perspective is slightly different. I would actually prefer to see less density and more retained trees on the property. Uh, because I think if you go into the forest, walk in the forest, our planners should be walking with developers, identifying trees that have long-term values and saying, how can we work around this tree as opposed to how can we build a building here? And, uh, and I think that that's something we don't do and we, we really should try to do. Uh, the trees were here first, and uh, a lot of them were here, been here for a long time. Some are recent. I, I appreciate that. Uh, some don't have the same values as others, but I think that uh, I'd like to know that we've done that tree assessment on a property, and we've said that we don't really hmm. want to work around these trees. Yeah. We always, and it's only natural, the developers always want to maximize how many par how many units can we get on this site, and uh, whether three feet apart or 10 feet apart, it's uh, it always is going to compromise something. And in this case, we compromise nature. 
and uh, I get disappointed with that. Um, but I understand it, and uh, and uh, we do get the housing. But um, in terms of uh, the, there are compromises we make all the way along. But my preference would be that we work with the landscape and we try to retain trees that are there. If you walk go along the road there, there are some trees on that there. I know that the roots are going to get disturbed if you get too close to them. Uh, so stay away from them and, and work around them. Uh, build them into your parking parking lots. Build them into the open spaces or build the open spaces around them would be my preference. But that being said, we're, we've come down this trail a little further than we have. So, But thank you for bringing up the issue of trees, Councillor Ledwick. Councillor Kroll. Um, one last comment, if I may. Um, just with respect to, and this came up uh, again at the planning committee, not with this project, but another one was it was suggested that some attempt at water capture be made to be able to sustain trees in periods when we get into um, watering restrictions that, um, and particularly with new growth. So if there was some consideration being given to some sort of cisterns or things that could be used for um, the, the um, watering of this new vegetation. other than aquifer water. Yeah. Uh, that wasn't a recommendation that came out of the committee, though, was it? Not for this project, for one of our okay. other projects. Yeah. Okay. So we have recommendations before us, and uh, Council, what's your wishes? Uh, we've received the report. The recommendation is that the Form and Character Development Permit DP 2021-10 be issued subject to the following conditions. Provision and approval by staff of an updated landscape plan, including individual pedestrian accesses from Park Road to fronting units. Does Council want to say anything else? So, Councilor Ladwig, you move that. Okay. Seconded by Councilor Kroll. Any further discussion on this? Hearing none, all in favor? Thank you very much. And Evie and Colton, this is where you can jump in and say, save the trees, save the trees. <laughs> Don't hesitate. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like keeping the trees. I like your plans. Yeah, yeah I agree. I, I like your idea of building around the trees. Yeah, I think we need to, we need to think more of that as opposed to how many, how many units can we get on this piece, piece of property? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so that, uh, yeah. Also the coast is like, lots of people come here because it's so, like natural and we like take a lot, we like respect nature a lot, you know, like that's yeah. a lot of people live here for that reason. That's right. So that's right. I'm respecting that more. There you go. Well, and those are important things we have to, we have to think about uh, uh, now and for the long term. We should that. Councilor Kroll, you had your hand up again. Well, you know, I, I totally agree with you in one sense. Um, and then in the other sense, what I hate to see happen is buildings go up, you know, and you've got these lovely mature trees who, because they've lost their friends, they ultimately end up dying. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sitting where I live, I look down along Gibson's Way and I see massive cedar trees dying because, you know, they've been trapped under driveways and foundations against the roots. And, you know, the end of our block, you know, trees again have died because, you know, people tried to save them, but once they lost, you know, you took out the alders, you took out the invasive species, but it's affected the root patterns, it's affected the wind patterns around the trees, the buildings affect the wind patterns. And sadly, at the end of the day, it's a tree that dies. And rather than being cut down and something, you know, that has a chance of growing in the environment, and becoming, um, you know, vibrant, we watch a slow, painful, agonizing death of a mature tree. And um, it, it, you know, it, it, it's a difficult situation. Yeah. The house that uh, Councillor Ladwig or Councillor Lumley was living in on the bluff, some friends of mine built the place and they boasted that they were only cut down four trees building 
that prop house. The first year the house was up, they lost seven trees because the the, the trees share you know trees share roots. They share too much together, and when you take out a few, it impacts the community, which there's a lesson to be learned there for all of us. But um, you know, sometimes it's just better to bite the bullet, but give some really serious thought to what you're replanting, how you replant it, how you replant it, and can you sustain it without it having to, you know, in 20 years be cut down. So I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Another perspective. <laughs> now, just because I'm sitting at the three committee, first of all, there will be all recommendations in, in this regard. But I just want to want to want to say I think the three perspectives here are valid. You have what Councillor Ladwig. We need also to do uh, reforestation on on the streets. That's how we're going to increase canopy. We we cannot necessarily ask every citizen to plant more trees in their property if they don't have the space. So that will be on the street. That's one recommendation. Another one is protect the root zones. If we can, that should be, and the protection has to be a real protection. That's what it is. Not just like, you know, what is recommended by science and done properly. And at the last resource, when this is not possible, I think so, I, it's, it's what you said is the way we replant uh, all this, we, we replace all this tree. So I think all this aspect has to be considered. It's not either or. It's all of them. Evie? Yeah, well, um, our old trees, can't they also be a safety hazard? You know, mm. like if they're in... Sometimes they can be. And if they don't have the roots around them, like Councilor Kroll is saying, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah it, it, as you can see, it's not it's never an easy answer. There's <laughs> always reason, but, but the, 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 you start off with a basic premises that it, if development wasn't occurring, the trees would be there. Mm -hmm. And then, then how can we how can we make the two fit together, and uh, and okay. achieve both objectives? So, okay, but enough about that, Kirsten. Thank you very much for that. Uh, that was approved, and uh, and um, we'll move that project on. And thank you for the uh, the planners, the, the architects, for being with us. We didn't call on you tonight. I appreciate that, uh, uh, but. Um, uh, thank you. It is a nice looking project and it will, it will be good uh, um, in terms of adding more housing in our community and we appreciate that as well because that is also very important. Uh, moving on then Kirsten, we're going to go to the next item which is 8.3 and once again this is a form of character development permit renewal for mixed use development at 672 North Road. Yes, thank you again, Mayor. Um, and I appreciate all the three conversations. <laughs> um, this item addresses a request to renew an expired form and character development permit for development of a 14 unit residential and commercial mixed use development at 672 North Road. I should say building, it's one building. The uh, form and character development permit for the pr proposed driftwood development was previously approved by this council in 2000, or 2019. Um, the permit subsequently expired due to work not commencing on the site within 24 months of issuance. And so a new development permit approval is required to proceed with the construction. Uh, the purpose of this report is to provide a summary overview of the proposed form and character, including some minor changes that are included in the current proposal, and to obtain a decision from Council on issuing the renewed permit. Um, the property at 672 North Road is located directly north of the Heritage Playhouse and across from the Sunshine Lodge Motel and St. Hilda's Church on North Road. Uh, the neighbouring property to the north and south are single-family dwellings. Zoning of the property as shown at the left is mixed use commercial, which supports commercial use as a grade with residential apartment use above. And neighboring lots on North Road are also zoned for mixed use commercial and residential. Uh, the proposed building is designed to a passive house standard, having a high level of energy efficiency. The applicants note that if reapproved, the building would be the first passive house building in Gibsons. The proposal includes a commercial retail space located at grade, um, that's shown in purple in this rendering, and, um, and 
access from the landscaped amenity space at the south side of the building, which you'll see shortly. This elevation view shows the south side of the building. Uh, this would be adjacent to the Heritage Playhouse, but behind a landscaped area. Um, stepped with the grade on the lot, 14 residential units are located on the two upper floors. These are accessed by stairs at the front and rear of the building and by a common elevator. The proposed units include two more than the 12 that were proposed in 2019. The change to address changing market demands, I understand, is achieved through reorganization of existing unit floor plans and by a 1.8 meter and 1.1 meter extension to the front and rear of the building, respectively. The site plan shows the organization of parking on the site and on the end of the lower floor of the building. 15 of the 23 parking spaces are located under the canopy of the upper floors of the building. The parking areas are buffered to the north and south with a sorry, north and east, with a planted buffer of trees and shrubs, which are described in the planting plan. Uh, a landscape boulevard with street trees and separated sidewalk will be provided on North Road, and a significant landscape patio and park space will, be, will provide uh, circulation and seating for the public and residents on the south side of the building, fronting the parking lot of the Heritage Playhouse. In the updated proposal, the floor area of the commercial space at grade has been reduced to allow for inclusion of a, an amenity space with gym and co-working space uh, next to it. Um, and these front onto the outdoor amenity space at the interior of the south frontage as well. This view shows a bird's eye view of the site with parking spaces now covered by the upper stories. There's additional parking on the north, uh, parallel parking on the north and east side of the site. Um, as seen from an interior view of the second level, each of the units has a patio space, which is scaled to the size of the unit. Interior stairs on the north side units shown here um, provide access to two, two levels in the unit. This view shows the north side of the building and the parking spa spaces which are accessed from the north side are shown uh, beneath the residential units. This view would be screened by the two meter wide planted buffer of trees and shrubs along the north property line. The building is stepped with the grade of the lot, uh, which slopes toward the rear, the rear to the east. This uh, perspective view from the vehicle access at the northwest corner of the site, the access off North Road, uh, shows the location of vehicle parking, which is largely under the building. Um, direct grade residential access is provided at the rear of the lower lobby from the parkade. A sidewalk also connects pedest pedestrian access to the front of the building via stairs, as shown. Um, as noted in the report, staff suggests that some interest in improved wayfinding for pedestrians might be provided with a sidewalk strip of distinct paving material leading residents and visitors from the parking area to building entrances. As seen by downhill neighbors, um, this is the east elevation and the bubbled outline on this drawing indicates changes to the organization of the windows and balconies that were made to reflect changes made to the interior layout of the units with the two additional units in the revised plan. Staff find that the change is not significant in terms of overall form and character of the building as one probably wouldn't notice these changes without a direct comparison. Uh, signage for uh, the building is shown in yellow with the, oh, the address would be above the entrance on the glass. This is a perspective view from North Road. Um, and closer up, the, the entrance providing some flow from the uh, park space on the right to the parking on the left and the, the apartment entrance up front. This view shows the building frontage um, from the sidewalk at the north the southwest corner of the lot on North Road. And in response to staff comments on the submitted proposal, the applicants following publication of the report have relocated a second building sign that was shown at the top of the ramp in the drawings in the report. Uh, this has served to open up the flow of pedestrian traffic and also improve sight lines around the entrance and minimize the feeling of enclosure that staff had pointed out around the recessed entrance. So the proposed finishing materials are intended to reflect a, co a West Coast Harbour aesthetic as desired for Upper Gibson's commercial development in the OCP. The siding of the building is wood grain aluminum composite cladding in varied colours that are intended 
to uh, mimic natural driftwood colors. The original proposal included wood clouding, cladding, sorry, and the upgrade uh, to wood look aluminum was made, I believe, to address comments from the fire department at the time of the original submission. Accents are provided uh, with a contrast of brighter wood, sorry, wood look finish on the inside of the balcony alcoves, it's also aluminum, and in the painted steel balcony railings and protective window surrounds. A stripe of color on the front face of the building was added to, uh, again, in response to planning commission comments uh, with the original proposal to um, highlight the, accentuate the front entrance of the building. At ground level, interest is provided in hard landscape elements with permeable pavers and various designs and textures. Uh, in this view of the building from the lower northeast corner, we see additional permeable paving details with herringbone pavers on the parking area and the curtain wall glazing of the commercial unit frontage. But the landscape plan is as pre previously approved. Uh, the plan includes substantial tree and shrub border plantings along the north and east property boundaries, screening parking from neighboring single family properties. A Detailed outdoor amenity, sorry, substantial outdoor amenity area is provided along much of the south boundary of the property, offering a gateway to the commercial unit entrance as well as common outdoor seating area for passers-by and users of the site. And a distinct outdoor common area for residents, uh, for gathering of residents is created to the east of the public space. Um, Plantings include a wide variety of suitable deciduous trees, evergreen and deciduous shrubs, and drought-tolerant perennial plants and grasses. Some of these are shown at the top of the slide, but not all. Um, staff reviewed the form and character of the proposal, and the details of the guidelines and review are included in the report. Strengths noted by staff include use of the pitched and stepped roof lines, breaking up massing with significant window and balcony features, unique and interesting design, promotion of sustainable energy efficient design, provision of site permeability that exceeds the town's requirements, and of quality outdoor space at the south uh, side of the frontage, strong relationship of the site design with neighboring heritage playhouse, minimization of parking areas as seen from the street and public areas, uh, use of deciduous trees for climate mitigation, exterior materials that reflect West Coast Seaside and Harbor character. Uh, three guidelines were found not to be substantially addressed, and these are that the entrance on the North Road frontage was made less welcoming by being sunken, in an, an effect that staff found was accentuated by the location of signage at the top of the ramp. As mentioned, the applicants relocated the signage in the plan to address that concern. Uh, that's the south, southernmost sign. A three meter planted edge between the parking and building is not possible, though required in the guidelines, given that the location of the parking under the building. So there would be nowhere to plant such a buffer. And finally, guidelines indicate a mix of deciduous and coniferous plant species. So while broadleaf evergreen shrubs are included, only deciduous trees are provided, but staff find that this is acceptable and desirable given the climate and comfort benefits of using deciduous trees adjacent buildings and outdoor amenity areas. Staff reviewed the zoning for the proposal with the revisions and find that the zoning requirements continue to be met. The increase in parking spaces required for the two additional residential units is balanced by the reduced number of parking spaces required for the smaller uh, commercial retail space. Referrals were sent on November 17th to the listed agencies. Uh, comments were received from the Ministry of Transportation, the Gibsons and District Fire Department, uh, Town of Gibson's infrastructure and building departments, and all comments provided uh, are to be addressed at the time of building permits should council approve the form and character permit. So staff's recommendations are summarized here. Given that the form and character guidelines are substantially addressed, that the applicants have provided a revision to address staff's concern about placement of the signage, uh, the recommendation provided on page one of the report is updated to recommend approval of the proposed form and character is subject only to provision of an updated landscape plan and cost estimate. Alternatively, council may recommend or require additional changes prior, prior to approval of the permit. I will now turn the floor over to council and note that the applicant, uh, Rafael Santana, is with us and available to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Kirsten. Uh, 
as you go back to your full screen. Thank you. Um, one question, two questions I have. One is that uh, after the initial approval that we did a couple of years ago, uh, there was a uh, an issue arose regarding the um, the garbage and the access to the garbage, as well as the servicing of the site uh, with the uh, I believe it was a sewer uh, coming across the back of the Heritage Theater. Have those now been resolved? Um, that is a good question. I noted a comment from the infrastructure department includes, um, oh, and I didn't include it here, um, resolving the, the garbage access. I believe that, um, I honestly, I can't speak to the other issue. It didn't come up in the referrals, so I okay. expect that it might have been addressed. Yeah, the concern I have about that is that the uh, by running that uh, sewage across the the south end of the Heritage Theater parking lot, uh, it was going to impact uh, uh, two or three large trees right on the corner with that that um, Gibson's Way, as well as there's a large um, uh, hydro. Uh, box at that location. And I think it was located there when the works were done on Gibson's Way. And, and uh, I'd be concerned, I'd be concerned if we're wiping trees out to accommodate the sewer uh, from, from a third party property, that's all. Yeah. Councillor Kroll. Um, thank you, Mayor Beamish. I noticed that uh, Representative um, has his hand up, but we oh, okay, didn't. Good. We at that previous request for easement, we didn't grant it. Yes. Yeah. Oh, we didn't grant it. No, but yeah. it, 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 I wonder how they solved it. Yeah. So, okay. So, uh, Mr. Santana, are you there? We are, yes. Uh, my wife, Megan Paris, and uh, myself, uh, Rafael Santana, are here to uh, address any comments in this regard. We can say that it has been addressed with the Ministry of Transportation. The uh, challenges are that we have to service the building uh, and the waste management of it through um, North Road. And that's been addressed by the possibility of a truck being able to go into the throat of the driveway and uh, exit accordingly with the new location for a garbage uh, room, both for the commercial and the residential spaces. So that has been uh, approved by the MOTI and uh, uh, we're presenting this as uh, as is uh, today for the development permit as well. How is the sewage uh, addressed? With regards to the sewage, you are catching me off guard, I must admit, but I don't remember that having been an issue with the civil engineering uh, as it was presented. Uh, we believe that the connections um, are compliant because they're still servicing out of North Road and okay. not necessarily out of Gibson's Way. So not at all actually out of Gibson's Way. Yeah. Okay, excellent, good, yeah. That, that did come up uh, previously, so good, thank you. Uh, other questions, Council? Council Deandrad? That's not more, it's not a question, I just comments. Uh, uh, I remember when this proposal came, I, I really I really liked the proposal, but I was hesitant <laughs> because of the style that it wouldn't meet our, our uh, village. <laughs> Seaside Village uh, style, and that was a big dispute at the time. I think still is, uh, but uh, uh, I think obviously uh, one aspect very positive it's being a passive uh, uh, house, right? Uh, so all the the the, the climate uh, the uh, excess of of carbon is addressed. Uh, I also, I like the change because it gave residents these options of having a, a workspace and a gym to work out. I think this was, I think this, I think it's going to, I'm glad that the developers made a change because I think this is going to be a, a great attractant to people, especially if you have to work at home, you're going to have everything uh, in your side. And, and, and the change, I think it made the design more, it broke down a little bit of the mass in a way, the, the, the color, the change at the front. So I think it was all positive, so. Councilor Deandre? No. <laughs> oh, sorry, Councilor Ladwig, sorry. I was looking at you. <laughs> 
Um, well, so I too share a number of uh, thoughts and comments that Councillor DeAndretti just shared. I, I mean, obviously, I, I love that it's a passive house construction and design. I think that's fabulous. Um, having said that, um, if I remember correctly, and I, I, I'm going to still stand behind this decision, I feel it's too far from a form and character perspective for the form and character guidelines that we have uh, for this area. Um, this particular intersection contains buildings that are of oldest heritage in our community. The church has, in fact, the oldest building in our community. The Heritage Playhouse and the Schoolhouse, they're all um, buildings that, in my mind, uh, if we enhance that intersection, can provide a, a very interesting gateway to the entrance of our community that shows part of our heritage and our history. And I feel that this building is just too in juxtaposition to that heritage. And so, um, yeah, it's just a bit too far of a leap for me for that particular location. If this was on Venture Way, I think it'd be awesome. Um, if it was just somewhere else where we weren't trying to maintain that history, then I'd be much more comfortable with it. If attempts had been made to, um, to honor the seaside character a little bit more than what I feel this particular design has done, then I would be more comfortable with it. And this is again, what makes these form and character guidelines so challenging is that it is so subjective. So although staff feel that, for example, they've uh, met the West Coast design features and that, sorry, I've just got a few comments here, um, that it enhances the small town, the form and character should you know, support and enhance our small town character. I mean, I, I respect their view. I don't feel that it does. I don't feel that it actually hits our small town character. Um, so for those reasons, I, I'm not supportive of this particular design. I just don't think that passive housing needs to compromise on those design features. I think we could have married the two and still had the best of both. So. Thank you. Councillor Chloral. Thank you, Mary Beamish. Um, you know, it, it, there's a, a bit of a challenge here because, you know, I think we, we refer to Seaside character, but I've yet to see anything in black and white or any sort of rendering that says, this is what Seaside character should look like. So to Councillor Ladwig's point, it's very subjective. What, you know, we've had situations where a building in the upper village was shot down because it was red, and yet we approved a building in the lower village that's all red. Um, so, you know, we're dealing, we, we're well aware of the fact that the OCP and the guidelines within it are a bit long in the tooth. Um, I do like this mottled finish that they've come up with for the, the, the facades of the building now, as opposed to what was originally presented, which looked, it, you know, the original presentation to me, I, li I liked it, but it, it didn't quite sit comfortably in the location. Um, personally, I feel with this new application of a low maintenance siding, which the, the original siding wasn't, um, you know, I quite like it. Um, you know, the, the trees between this building and the Heritage Playhouse are growing. They've grown up appreciably since when the Heritage Playhouse opened in 2000 and that site was re-landscaped. Um, so I, I, you know, I'm sympathetic towards this project. Um, about the only thing I would really love to see is the additional two units that have been added to the building being rental as opposed to um, stratified and purchase units. But that's um, nothing to do with form and character. But I, I quite like the, the new approach that they've brought to this project. Councillor Ludwig. Thanks, sorry, Mary Beamish, and then I'll, I'll be quiet. Um, just to Councillor Kroll's point, I totally agree with him that, at you, that um, seaside character is interpreted in many different ways. And, it, and in fact, in my years sitting on the Advisory Planning Commission, we had a number of proposals come forward with very different versions of what seaside character was. 
Um, sea glass was a great example of that. It was uh, a very European design with curved archways and stone pillars, and, and they provided all sorts of photos in, in Italy or wherever, you know, European cities where that was in fact the seaside character that was used in those in those uh, areas. We don't have to look any further than that exact intersection to see what historic seaside character for our community was. It is the buildings around that intersection. It is the church. It is the heritage playhouse. It is the school building. That was what our seaside character was. And that's what I, for many years, have been trying to preserve. <laughs> And so, like I said, I think there's a, there's a place for this new um, modern design in our community. I'm not against modern design, but the fact that we somehow through history have managed to preserve these buildings around this intersection, these historic buildings around this intersection, I just personally would like to see buildings that uh, aren't quite as uh, in contrast to those because they are our history. Colton. Like what Ms. Uh, Councillor Lag Lag Ladwig said, sorry. It does look good. I think it looks really good, but it does look very modern. And I think it is out of place there. It does follow the seaside design with the weathered paneling, but I think the colored glass and the um, balconies on it do look very modern and it does seem kind of out of place there. Yeah, I recall the conversation we had previously and I recall uh, my position at that time was that uh, seaside character property belongs by the sea. And Upper Gibsons is a much more in transition than, than I would like to see for Lower Gibsons. Although we are seeing some very modern housing going into Lower Gibsons that does not have seaside character. Uh, a lot of concrete and flat roofs and everything else going down there. So, so that we've, we've moved away in, in a lot from, that, from our ideal of that. I actually think that if you're going to do something that is not seaside character, having something so totally opposite is not a bad statement uh, in terms of uh, other than trying to fit something in and say, well, we're, 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 we're going to give a nod to seaside character, but it's not really seaside character. This is not, to me, seaside character. The, other than the finishing is nice. It's kind of West Coast. Um, the uh, Kearns Mall is not seaside character. Uh, the the school is not seaside character. All the new construction, all the construction that we're seeing now is kind of moved away from that. And uh, it's, I, I really um, recall that our earlier discussion, I su strongly support what they're doing here in terms of a passive house. I think it's uh, gonna be a, a great model for the community. And um, the, uh, there, are, there are many examples where you can have the old and the new, uh, sitting side by each. I don't know what would happen to the Heritage Theatre, for example, at some point in time, that's going to become the the, the tear down, torn down Heritage Theatre and something else will replace it. Whether we can keep a heritage look to that, I don't know. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm comfortable with this and I, I congratulate them on the changes that they've made. And I um, um, actually look forward to seeing something happen. I mean, so many of our projects, they, they come and they sit for an awful long time. Like this one's been sitting for over two years. Um, it'd be nice to see this one move forward and actually be built so that um, I'm comfortable with it myself. So uh, I understand your perspective, Councillor Ladwig. I just think that my, from my perspective, Heritage Hills, those areas are, are seaside character. And, um, and they need to be, for, uh, historic Gibson's Landing is what we call that when we go down the hill and we need to, uh, to continue to, uh, to, um, to protect that because I think that's what people expect when they come, uh, especially from the water side of the community. That being said, I see no more hands up. So uh, it, oh, I see a hand up again, Councillor Kroll. No, I was just going to, um, 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 make the motion that we move the uh, proposal as staff have presented it. Okay, and the recommendation, Kirsten, we're looking at is not include B, is that correct? 
And that is moving the sign? Uh, that is correct, because yeah, that okay. is included. Yeah. That's already dealt with, okay. Okay, so the recommendation is the council authorize the issuance of the developer permit 2021-25, subject to provision of an updated landscape plan and cost estimate reflecting minor changes to the site plan. Okay, Councilor Kroll, thank you. Seconded by Councilor Dindrad, thank you very much. Any last comments or thoughts from anybody? Call the question, all in favor? Opposed? Do you want that recorded, Councilor Ludwig? Yeah, and record that, please. Thank you very much. So, uh, Rafael, you may now proceed with your project. Uh, can I just ask you what your timeline is at this point? The intention is to finalize uh, pre-sales. We've sold five units uh, at this point, and uh, we're hoping to rush with a building permit now that the DP is in place, uh, assuming that everything is uh, proceeding with the accurate paperwork. And... Uh, shake off COVID because what a year it's mm -hmm. been. Um, <laughs> two years. Two years. Yeah. And, How many pre-sales do you need before you oh move forward? God. Only three really, but, but, uh, we're trying to but because we're newcomers, higher, yeah. we're yeah. needing to finance with a little more aggression yeah. to uh, the pre -sales. Okay. So okay. we're hoping to break ground by spring. Yeah, and we really want this to be a reality because it means a lot. It's a it's yeah, very heartfelt project. We've yeah. been studying it for years, so yeah. we'll, we'll be happy to uh, take on any questions regarding the character, oh, because gosh, we know that's yeah. a sticking point to yeah. uh, council members and, and the community, but uh, we'd love to sit down and, and chat with you about this, because we've studied it to length, and uh, yeah. we believe that it will be uh, a place that hopefully in 100 years will be asked whether it's worth tearing down. So, <laughs> right. and, and be yeah. the thing to be proud of, yeah. Are you still planning to have that education element in the lobby? It's really down to strata, mm -hmm. unfortunately, but uh, okay. it, is, um, it is a possibility and we'd love to have that synergy with the uh, Playhouse. Uh, unfortunately for us, we can only provide the space and it's for the users to uh, direct the future. Okay, good. Okay. Well, thank you and good luck with your project. Thank you so much. I appreciate thank it. You. Okay. Okay, Council, now it's time for Council reports. And uh, this is a portion of the agenda, um, Colton, where Council, uh, Youth Council get to talk about anything they want to talk about in terms of bringing up issues or talk about things they've done during the past period between meetings. So that um, um, we just uh, take some time here to uh, reflect and, uh, and present some information to each other. So, I'm um, just going to ask uh, who would like to go first. I will. Okay. Since our last meeting, uh, I went to Ottawa, and that was interesting. And uh, we can talk about that some other time. Um, I attended the track AGM uh, the other night, which was very interesting, and it was good to see that uh, that group uh, still being very active and uh, committed to to. Um, uh, Transportation on the Sunshine Coast and the projects they're undergoing. A very entertaining final half hour of short uh, uh, videos on uh, different elements of uh, transportation. I'm in midst of doing a uh, short uh, uh, four module program on equity. And uh, this is one that's being tested out for uh, university. And uh, I agreed to be one of the uh, trial subjects. So I just uh, did uh, the introduction and two of the modules today. And uh, then I'll do the next two modules tomorrow. There's only four modules. But it's very interesting talking about, you know, the difference between equality and equity and how we should be considering equity into our community and the decisions that we make as council. And uh, it's, it's a program that's being developed for local governments uh, and a very interesting perspective. I also attended today a uh, hour and a half watershed workshop uh, put on by UBIC. And that was very interesting, very timely for me after we did our watershed uh, uh, dialogue in, in, in uh, November, just to see how many other communities, there's over 200 people participating in this workshop talking about watersheds and funding for watersheds and different things that are happening around the province. Also very timely considering our request to ABICC. And the province is looking at providing some funding for watershed uh, security. 
and uh, they're going to be doing 2022 is kind of um, developing the plan and developing the budget and then 2023 for implementation and um, and there's a, a movement on foot saying well uh, that's nice but we want the funding we need the funding now and especially because of some of the other things that have happened the projection is it's going to be between 50 and 100 million dollars a year available for water, watershed security. Um, I sent an email out today to many people saying how can we how can we anticipate that and uh, and get ahead of that so that we know what we want to do and I think it's very important. Um, I spent uh, an hour the other day with the uh, Sunshine Coast uh, um, family practice group uh, talking about the uh, uh, different health needs on the coast uh, from a community perspective. Uh, it's already been done with uh, with the uh, uh, Sea Nation and District of Sea So it was an interesting conversation about uh, dealing with how how the expansion of family practice and some of their challenges is they project uh, uh, attracting more healthcare workers to the coast, gain housing becoming one of the big issues. So how the how they manage that. Uh, the talk of the town on East Link last week it was also interesting uh, with uh, Darnella Seegers and uh, Director McMahon. Uh, SCRD meeting I attended, the council short-term workshop, uh, short-term rental workshop, um, among other things. So that just uh, gives you a sense of uh, it's not all just sitting around waiting for the next council meeting. There are other things that uh, are done in between time, but. They're all interested in that. I find they're all very relevant to the things that we are doing. And uh, um, I hope to be able to kind of build on the equality discussion, the equity discussion uh, very shortly uh, with some of the material that I've seen coming out of that already. So uh, that was my two weeks quickly. Um, um, who's next? Councillor. Kroll, then, then I'll come to you, Colton. Councillor Kroll? I'll defer to our youth member first. Okay, Colton, go ahead. All right. Something interesting that happened just today was in the high school, we did a food drive. Mm. So on Thursday, or that's when I did it, I went around Heritage Hills, the neighborhood just north of my house, yeah. and I distributed a bunch of bags for the food drive, picking up food for the Salvation Army, and... Admittedly, I don't know the other um, food bank, but it's, host, it's hosted through the Elphinstone leadership team. And then today we went around the neighborhoods and there's tons of neighborhoods involved across Elfie's area. Mm -hmm. And we picked up the food and then I saw in the library today, there's so much food that we got. So I think it's a really great thing for That's the food great. banks of the coast. That's good, thank you for doing that. I think the other food bank in town here is St. Hilda's. And then the other ones down the Sunshine Coast further down. But yeah, that's that's great. Um, and Councillor Kroll, speaking of that, perhaps you could cover the Christmas dinner. Um, yes, well, thank you. And Colton actually um, picked up on something that I was going to mention because with our youth involvement, I was really impressed to see students out handing out the food bank bags and going door to door, door tonight to um, collect collect them so um, good work um, and again youth involvement um, Evie I think was in, has been involved with us in the past we have a community dinner coming up on the 18th at the Gibson's Legion at Thanksgiving between Gibson's and Seashelt we served close to 700 meals um, we're anticipating at least that many for Christmas and um, it was really great at, um, at Easter, we had the um, high school students out serving the, the meals. Um, last year at Christmas, the culinary team at Elphinstone High School actually prepared the food, um, which was absolutely fabulous this year because of the way their curriculum has rolled out. They don't have the capacity to do it, but they're gonna be doing hopefully cranberry sauce for us. Um, since our last meeting, I and I had to get my little dig in with the the developer on the North Road project because I do sit on the emergency housing committee and incentivizing rentals within that thing. So we're always looking at for opportunities to create rentals. So we met on the 22nd 
Then on the 23rd, um, Councillor Ludwig and myself and uh, Mark Brown met um, with folks from the tourism to discuss where the Persephone is going to end up. And I don't know if you pay any attention to Facebook or waste book, as some people call it. Um, there's a lot of conversation. Where's the Persephone? Where's it going to end up? What's happened to it? So um, we're potentially looking at options for rehousing the Persephone once it's restored. So we had that meeting on the 22nd. Um, met with the CAT committee on the 24th. Um, not the bylaw CATs that we discussed earlier today. This is the community action team to deal with the op opioid crisis. And it's staggering. We've had eight deaths on the coast in the last few months. It's been exacerbated by COVID because people are using on their own. Um, sadly, one of the more recent deaths was a, a, a very young person, which we, you know, we just don't want to see. So it's a real challenge um, with this committee. There is some light at the end of the tunnel. Hopefully there is a potential for a rehab facility here on the coast. They're just ironing out a few wrinkles in the fabric of life to try and get that up and running. Um, we met on uh, December 1st, the design advisory panel and sadly the project that was supposed to be in our agenda today was at the last minute pulled so that'll be coming up again um on the 28th i attended with mayor beamish the lighting ceremony of the trees at tim hortons um having participated through another volunteer group of doing that project i know how much work goes into it so i work, certainly want to commend the people who did it. But one of the things that came out that I wanted to bring to council's attention was this year, the uh, group that did it is the, um, the junior soccer players. And one of the things that they commented to me was the improvement in our playing fields. So kudos to staff. I know um, 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 Tyler's been working really hard to um, with uh, other groups, the regional district and um, and some volunteers to get the fields up to snuff. But they said the difference in the playing fields is just you know immense since um, this new initiative has been taken on with them. On the twenty fifth, I was at a launch, a presentation launch for a new BC Ferries app. Um, I'm not going to say too much about it at this point. I think they took the comments they received and have gone back to the drawing board. Um, on Saturday, I um, I was going to complain. We, we were out collecting money for the Elves Club and there was someone just in the background constantly ringing the bell. He wasn't doing it enough to warrant activating our bylaw officer to deal with the noise. But uh, poor Mayor Beamish was competing for the Salvation Army with all the first responders in the community. And I, I'm once again, just totally blown away. Um, Gibsons between Marine Search and Rescue and the Gibsons Fire Department raised $23,029.20. That was of a total of $31,005.40. So, you know, we raised the 23,000, the rest of the coast managed to raise $7,976.20. Mm -hmm. In total, the Elves Club between corporate donations and, um, and uh, telethon donations raised a total of $40,521 which is pretty impressive. Uh, but the generosity of this community, um, I was really nervous this year because of different things that had happened with COVID and you know, just the cost of everything going up and what's happened in the Fraser Valley that people wouldn't appreciate the need in our own community. But every, you know, it, it was just overwhelming, um, the response we were 
up almost seven thousand dollars over last year so um kudos to the first responders who are out there the firemen just made out like bandits with sixteen thousand three hundred dollars um and then on friday i'm attending a thing through bc's small harbors on dealing with oil spills and hopefully we never have to deal with it but at least we'll have a group here prepared that's it for me for now thank you councillor pro councillor deandra My report is not that <laughs> extensive as Councillor Crow. I have been uh, a lot working internally. I, I was uh, working on the on the cat uh, animal responsibility document. It took me a lot of digging and research and looking at bylaws all over. But uh, it's good to understand um, possibilities and the issues and so on. Uh, I, I was also. I, I mean, I'm glad that we uh, we addressed some of the the challenge that we had with the three committee and and so I was working on that too and also working with a lot of documentation that have been produced and 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 looking at uh, just to be uh, up to speed to the, the meetings that will be coming forward and obviously there's a lot of work to be done but I'm overly excited and, uh, and the Senior Society is actually putting a Christmas uh, dinner and they are doing uh, either deliveries or you can pick up. And it costs $25 if you pick up and $30 if you want it delivered. And it's a very beautiful dinner and is uh, produced uh, by cook for you and obviously in partnership with the Senior Society. And you can pick up, it's on, it will be served from today's December 17 and December 21. So there will be a lot of opportunities and from 10 a.m., 1 p.m. I think this information will be on the website. Thank Great. you. Yeah. It's that time of year. And I think we have to be very mindful of everybody's needs this time of year. I know that the, uh, the, um, Shelter is still ongoing. The drop-in is still going on. And there are people out there, especially in this extreme weather. Uh, Silas White is doing a great job uh, continuing to visit people in tents to find people living in the woods, uh, continuing to take home their laundry and do it for them, uh, which I feel is absolutely amazing. And I really value him as a, as a partner in this process for us. So pretty great. So that uh, if anything you can do, think of can do, uh, volunteer this time of year it's uh, giving back is really important so i'll be on the salvation army kettle as councillor Kroll says every saturday between now and christmas started last week and then on the thursday before christmas uh, uh, so that uh, if you want to come to the iga mall and uh, and uh, do your shopping and um, see me that's where i'll be between 11 and 1 Okay, anything else, uh, anybody's minds? Oh, seeing none, we'll carry on to our agenda. And uh, we're at uh, uh, correspondence now. We have several items of correspondence, uh, pages of correspondence there. And uh, is there anything, right, Colton, go ahead. Sorry, um, is the, in the meetings, is there normally an agenda distributed to everyone before? Because with this meeting, I didn't have that. Mm -hmm. There is. Uh, I've been checking on my, I can find it on the website and I can show you how to find it corporately. Okay. Yes. Well, let's, we'll okay. make sure that through the corporate office that you get one in advance and you have it there because as we do put an agenda out uh, and it's, uh, it is what we'll be following tonight. So that uh, we'll make sure that you have access. We also have a youth um, counselor email. And uh, that's where I thought they were going to, is the youth counselor email. But if not there, then it should go to you individually. So to make sure we get them there. Thank you for bringing it up. Yeah. Councilor Kroll. Um, are we into correspondence now? Uh, we're into correspondence now. Go ahead. Okay. From the reading list of November 22nd, um, there was a letter from Patrick Weiler. Um, and that I'm glad we have both our students with us tonight. 
Um, the letter was an invitation for um, people to participate in the Sea to Sky, Sea to Sky Country Constituency Youth Council. And of course, because it went to mayor and council, it went into the reading file November 22nd and the deadline for it was um, December 4th, I think. Yes. Anyway, I thought rats. So I reached out to um, MP Weiler's office today and they have extended the deadline to December 19th. So if either of our, and it doesn't have to be the counselor, it could be the alternate who attends this, but either if either, uh, either Evie or Colton, if you're interested in participating in this, um, let me know. There's an application form. It's fairly straightforward. It's online. And it's basically, it's all the communities that surround the House Sound Biosphere. So, you know, you don't even get to, you not only get to listen to our problems, you get to listen to other people's problems. And misery loves company. So it's a, it's a great experience. Um, I believe, um, no, it wasn't Sasha, it was um, um, Elish, Elish um, was on the committee a couple of years ago. And I think she got a lot out of it. So, um, Evie? Is it an ongoing thing? Yes. It's, um, they average, um, what they have is they have um, one, one meeting about every two months or approximately two hours. And because of COVID, they're, they're done online. So it's at presently, I think it originally was intended that it would happen in person, but... Um, you know, COVID destroyed a lot of plans that um, were, were made. But it is a, a good opportunity to engage with, with youth from other communities and just get an overview of some of the, you know, bigger pictures, not only facing us, but that other people are having to deal with. So if either of you are interested, just let me know. And I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll forward you the applications regardless. And if you're interested, just let me know you've applied. Colton? I had checked that out before um, and I was interested in it for a while, but then I was concerned that I'd be like overwhelmed by doing too much stuff. They got interested in it again a few days ago, but I noticed that the application deadline was supposed to be December 5th. That's right. So they have extended it. Um, and um, I had a, I had a note from the constituent, uh, from Patrick's uh, liaison. And I also had a note from Patrick. So he, because we have a youth council, they would really like to, um, you know, have our involvement. Okay, yeah, I'd be really interested in that, actually. Okay, I'll, I'll forward you the link for the application. Or you may have it. Or I do have it, yeah. Yeah, so if you have it, just go ahead and um, and and send it in. It, the deadline is now uh, December 19th uh, by 11.59 p.m. All right. Great. Uh, Councilor Dean Dredd. Councilor Ludwig was first, so. Okay, <laughs> Councilor Ludwig. Yeah, I just wanted to follow up uh, on a few letters in our correspondence packages, as well as Ms. Anderson's uh, comment earlier there uh, this evening during inquiry. Um, there's a number of letters, one from Donna, um, area E on October 18th asking for let asking for a meeting with us and with the with MOT regarding stormwater management and I know that you guys have met I believe you met on the 23rd which is great somehow I I don't know what happened but I somehow got cut out of that email chain unfortunately I'm sure it was just an error um, but uh, I toured Miss Anderson's property with Donna uh, on October 18th I believe it was and I too am quite concerned about what's going on there. And I would like to be involved in the conversations that move forward on this. And I would like to ask that there was a letter that Ms. Anderson put forward on, I think the 22nd of November. And she puts in there a number of uh, very pointed questions that I think are 
worthy of us exploring. And so I would like to ask for council support in us answering some of these questions. Um, there is some of uh, our more valuable farmland, could be valuable farmland in that area. And when I say we, I mean the Sunshine Coast, obviously it's outside of our boundary, but um, I do see a ton of water heading in that direction. And I would like us to explore what is going on with regard to that stormwater management issue. So um, yeah, I, I, th I think we want to be cautious. Uh, I mean, it's been going on for ever. It's mm -hmm. not. It's not something new. And uh, and October and November were extreme weather, uh, rain weather uh, here in the Fraser Valley and everywhere. So everywhere had mm -hmm. had extreme weather. It's not not just uh, in town of Gibson's area E. So I think we, we want to acknowledge that that uh, any plan that we have on stormwater. It has to be approved by Ministry of Transportation uh, for subdivision, and they are the responsible party for area E uh, stormwater. And that um, the, um, but I've asked staff to respond uh, to her, and uh, I'm just concerned that it takes so long, but we know how busy staff are. And also the uh, SCRD has assigned their CAO to work on this project. And our staff are looking at, uh, have contacted the urban systems to get a quote for a stormwater study. And my experience is you don't fix these problems between rainfalls, they take time. And so that uh, uh, if you want to divert the stormwater pattern from the town of Gibsons or perhaps uh, divert the stormwater coming into town of the Gibsons from the regional district somewhere else, uh, then that's fine. We, we can do that, but that's going to take money and time and, mm -hmm. um, and, and partnerships. So, but it is being worked on by our staff. I just disappointed that uh, it's still an ongoing conversation and we haven't responded yet. Although we did have a meeting with Donna McMahon and on this uh, at her request, uh, we also met with the regional district on this at her request, so it has not been not dealt with. And there was a 2009 Delcan report on stormwater prepared by the regional district that addresses this specific issue in 2009 that was not acted upon by the regional district. So, there's a lot. There's a lot out there. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. I know that and I and I appreciate that and I'm, I'm really glad that you guys met. All I'm saying is I sent an email on the 19th of October asking to be part of those discussions and asking that MOT be part of those discussions. The MOT and, is invited but they haven't showed up yet. Okay so um, I guess what I'm wondering is what can I do to help move this conversation along because I would like to be a part of this conversation and I would like MOT to be there. So I mean I sent a letter, Donna sent a letter, if they haven't responded, do we just drop it now or do can we send them a letter perhaps from No, I, I think it just lets staff work on it. They are, they are working with uh, urban systems to try to come up with a, uh, a quote and a plan that would include, uh, but uh, if they, they've got to come to the table and uh, they work for the, they work essentially with the SCRD because the SCRD is, has no stormwater jurisdiction. So its stormwater jurisdiction is through the Ministry of Transportation uh, within the rural area, and so they're trying they're trying to get their their attention as well. But so far, they haven't got it. But we haven't sent a letter to MOT saying we'd like to meet with you about our stormwater management. That's part of the report coming from Urban Systems as to what we can do and how we do it and uh, at what cost and who the partners are and what it's going to cost them. Yeah. Well, okay, I'll just say it again. I would like us, I'd like this council to send a letter to MOT asking them to meet with us to talk about stormwater management on Highway 101. I think there's a little bit of an issue there, and I would like us to send a letter to MOT asking for a meeting with them. Okay, corporate officer or CAO? I know that uh, I have received Mrs. Anderson's emails and I've responded for my part. I don't know where it's at with regard to uh, anything further coming from the um, Director of Infrastructure Services or Mark Brown. I'll defer to him on that. 
Uh, yes, thank you. We have met um, with the regional district and uh, in speaking with uh, uh, both the area director, Donna, um, we did uh, look at inviting the new area manager of Modi to be a part of the next meetings that we have with uh, the regional district staff and their planning staff is really um, the only mechanism they have to look at development in the regional district as far as planning for storm drainage. Um, as pointed out by Mayor Beamish, the actual function of drainage rests with the province, uh, Ministry of Transportation and, and Infrastructure. Um, so that's where it's at right now. And as Mayor Beamish has said, what we're doing proactively is not only looking at the town of Gibsons, but asking urban systems to look at um, what it would cost to do a study of the drainage basins uh, in the subject area and determine a cost sharing arrangement whereby we would look at studying not only the drainage basin of the town, but also the major contributing drainage basins that are occurring um, outside of town. So rather than, you know, um, provide a, a, an, um, an off the cuff remark about where this drainage is coming from, we want us some scientific and engineering planning to determine where the drainage basins are and how to best address handling that drainage. But as the mayor said, this is not gonna occur overnight. It's It's been a longstanding uh, issue and it's been exacerbated, of course, with recent rains and more development. However, um, as the mayor pointed out, there was a 2009 study done jointly with the SCRD and Modi, and uh, we're looking at that study uh, to determine um, as background information for our updated study. Can I just ask when will that report be ready, the report that you're working on? Uh, right now, we're just getting um, an estimate of the cost to do such a report and what the scope of work will be. And our plan is to bring the results of that to MOT. So we're waiting to meet with them until we have the results of that. Is that correct? To determine, yes, what the scope of work would be if MOTI hasn't even, even had any funding to contribute to this or if we can determine if there's any grant funding to actually have the study done. Well, the SCRD might be having another conversation with MOT. Because because MOT is responsible for drainage in the regional district. But remember, this is an operational issue. It's not something we should be debating or finding solutions for at a council meeting on, at, uh, after nine o'clock at night. But, uh, it is an operational issue and the operational people uh, have, have it in hand at this point in time. So, Councillor Kroll. Um, and, you know, I, I realize that, you know, it's the Mrs. Anderson isn't the only person currently being impacted. You know, there's people on Ocean Beach Esplanade that have been impacted. Um, the regional district is dealing with washouts in, well, it was, it was barely a, a stream um, near the new proposed church road well. There's washouts there. So it, it's, it's, it's not just an isolated problem. If you look at, um, like, Quite frankly, I won't even I won't even take uh, lower road when you look at the damage that's been done there on on the um, on the Georgia Strait side of uh, lower road with the washout that's occurred there. Um, you know, there's a so it's not just this one issue. It has to be looked at, I think, in a larger context than solving one problem because invariably, and I'm glad Waterline's involved with this because. You know, you invariably fix one problem, divert the water, and it creates a problem somewhere else. So I, I think, you know, although it's not happening at lightning speed, at least, you know, the parties that need to come together are coming together on this issue. Yeah, before we go further, uh, we're going to have to have a, a motion to continue this meeting. So um, it's now after nine o'clock. We have another meeting to go. I'm going to suggest we have a motion to extend till 10 o'clock. Councillor Kroll, Councillor Dindrad. I have to leave at 9.30. Sorry? I have to leave at 9.30. Okay, curious. so we'll go to 9.30. Um, uh, all in favor of going till 9.30? Oh, so motion to Council Ladwig to 
Seconded by Council Dean Drad. All in favor of going to 930. Yeah. That'll probably get us through inquiries. Yeah. Yeah. Council Dean Drad. Just a clarification. Well, I'm really pleased to hear about uh, the, the this study that Waterline, I didn't know that Waterline was uh, involved. Is it a study that's only being financed by the town of Gibsons or is it in conjunction with the SCRD? The study that urban, um, versus urban, urban, system. urban system. Is it the same study that's going to encompass? Is it both urban system and waterline, or the waterline is? It's, it's it's. I'm just trying to understand this specific issue that we will address, or or you got to merge both information. Uh, this is just urban systems to determine what the drainage basins are in the area and what the location of the drainage basins to determine which is in uh, Modi jurisdiction and what is in town of Gibson's jurisdiction. And then it provide an estimate of, of um, how much it would cost to study those two areas. Oh, that's just estimation of the study. Okay. Correct, yes. But is there anticipation that this will, will be <clears throat> financed by both uh, institution is it by both governments is it possible or well it'd be unlikely to get any contribution from the scrd because they have no uh drainage function oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. In including maintenance of drainage as it goes through those lands mm -hmm. and uh, and that i suspect is part of the problem is that if you don't maintain your drainage system and keep it flowing it backs up <coughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any more on the on the the correspondence uh, yeah. issues on either November fifth? No, Councilor Dean Drag, go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. I'll, I would just mention quickly. There's a a, a letter from actually is a MP from Victoria Lavinia uh, Rojas, and she actually is about fireworks. And I'm really pleased that someone I know many people not too concerned with fireworks, but obviously they have a detrimental effect. And she specifies uh, here, right, uh, how uh, fireworks can put the health, animals, people, environment at risk, and they can frighten, and injure pets, all the things that actually I raised before. So if anyone is interested, please, I already signed the petition, it's at the federal level. And I really hope that if the federal level address fireworks, the town of Gibson will not be, have to worry about it. Uh, there's also a letter, Mayor Bimish, for Katie, uh, from Katy Peters, but I know there's a letter uh, later. I'm just trying to understand where we are at, but I'll, I know the, there's a, another letter coming, uh, which is on the package. So maybe we can leave the conversation. Uh, but um, I, I wanna ask, there's a letter about the electric card level two charging stations. And we have been, you know, we, we were talking to Hydro and so, uh, this, it, it, this is just an individual that, that is asking, right, trying to understand if it's possible that the town uh, finds a location for, for electrical uh, charge. How do we deal with that? Is, it, is there an interest? Okay, perhaps Council Crow has an answer. In the, meeting, in the meetings I attended with BC Hydro, um, there's quite an application process mm -hmm. involved. Also, the charging stations are quite expensive. So I believe the municipal uh, component is a minimum of about $12,000. Mm -hmm. Then there's a hydro component and a federal component, but it's finding the location and also ensuring that the, the hydro infrastructure is there. Now, there, we were supposed to have a delegation to council on this issue, which exactly. they sort of went away. I would prepared some material with respect to that, which I'm happy to share with you. But it, okay. it, it, it's fairly, it, it's not just cut and dry. To, here's a spot. Um, I remember, I was in one of the meetings. I understand, no. but I, 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 I knew that according to the meeting that uh, local government had to kind of uh, made the, make the request. And that's yeah. why I'm trying to understand. And it's in conjunction with BC Hydro and then BC Hydro have an overall master plan of where they're trying to incentivize the, this type of thing. The stations are about a quarter of a million dollars. So um, 
They're but if they have to come with only twelve thousand dollars, it might not seem too much. But I'll, I'll, okay, we can share some information because I'm very interested in supporting whatever we can in in this regard. Already. That's okay. okay. I'm done. Anything else in the correspondence file? We'll go on to the items we have on correspondence. We have the emergency profession, communication professionals, uh, uh, public employees, local 8911, concern about ECOM and uh, the changes being made to ECOM. And any, any discussion on that, Council? Okay, uh, Rebecca, these could, we will need to make sure these are acknowledged and say thank you. Um, and then the next one is a um, uh, note on BC uh, Supreme Court injunction and Coast Gas Link. Just came in for information. Um, any comments on that? Okay, seeing none. Um, we've got one from, uh, this is the one from uh, the minister. Um, regarding uh, Mr. Farnworth, this regarding our UBCM presentation on human trafficking and his response on that. Basically talking about what the province is doing that, in that area in terms of uh, financially and support to uh, victim services and other programs. Councilor Indra, did you have something on that? Yeah, I, I was curious. Uh... How, how we could articulate, because my understanding, a lot of these issues happen at schools. So how can we get the school board involved? And I'm just trying to articulate uh, who starts the conversation in this area, right? Because that would be a lovely uh, opportunity, right? To educate our, all our students, right? I think that's what, uh, I think that's what Kathy Peters does, is makes presentations to school boards and uh, school districts, but... I'm not sure that that's our role, but uh, I think that's what she does. And, and some of these programs we do that are funded by the province. I understand, but the latter, she, she, oh, first she came here and now she, she talks about doing presentations to councils, so to municipalities. So yeah. perhaps I wonder if council uh, should at least write a letter to the district and just pass this information. Are they aware? Or, I, I don't know if the, the school district 46, 46 is aware. Of that. I, okay, you want to make a motion that we. I'd love to make a motion in this regard if, if it's possible that the town of Gibson writes a letter to, you know, to, to the board and just to, to acknowledge that and that we, we and, and actually, Mayor, I know in UBCM you made some uh, request, no, sorry, during the policing, you made some suggestion in this regard. Yeah, that was U UBCM. Yeah. No, no. The, when you participate in the policing, uh, oh, yeah. you are one of the chosen members of the police yeah. committee, right? Yeah. So you made suggestions in this regard, and then you be saying, I think it's important that the school board, maybe they know. I don't know. It's just, it's almost like we can pass the ball to them <laughs> in a way or whatever, right? If I just don't want to leave this hanging because this is a, 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 a very important issue. So. Yeah. And your motion is? It's so that uh, the council uh, writes a letter to the district, just uh, informing all these steps that, you know. Yeah, forward uh, information from Kathy Peters, perhaps? Information and the fact that she came here, the fact that you sat at, at the committee and you supported that, the fact that UBCM made uh, all these uh, uh, investments yeah. and perhaps the schools can take advantage of that. Okay. Somebody want to second that? that Councilor Kroll? All in favor? Thank you. Okay, Rebecca, you want to draft that letter up? Okay, the other one was uh, also from the Ministry of Municipal Affairs. And uh, this was from the Deputy Minister regarding the state of emergency. Um, once again, demonstrating that more than Area E was affected by flooding and uh, talk about some of the issues and also some of the grant programs that are available now to take a look at uh, because it's a province-wide issue, uh, not a local issue. And so that um, uh, looking at how they rebuild afterwards. So there may be some funding opportunities in here. I haven't had a chance to sit down and go through it in that level of detail, but Councillor Kroll? I was going to suggest that, it, that we should have a look at this to see if we might be able to 
acquire some funding for this study that we're doing with respect to drainage and highway issues? It's possible. Um, we're not the uh, we're not the emergency operations center. That's uh, the regional district. But this is um, money that perhaps yes. the regional district could apply for and direct the funding to this study that's being done mm -hmm. with the interface between regional yeah. districts who don't have authority and Good municipalities yeah. who get stuck with the bill. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps, uh, Mark, you could take a look at this. Um, uh, with the regional district and see if there are opportunities here. We did express this to them actually uh, right away when this came out, talking about the this uh, opportunity for funding. And I don't know if they've done anything about it. No. Yeah, it's certainly certainly something that um, Dean McKinley and I have been talking about. So good. I'm meeting good. with him again. Meeting with him again Thursday morning. So definitely. Good. Listen. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, all of those correspondence have been received, uh, two follow-ups, um, and um, we'll go now on to bylaws. Uh, nothing further in those correspondence, uh, I'm assuming. Okay, under bylaws, uh, we'll go to um, the uh, bylaw to provide for the borrowing of money and anticipation revenue for the year 2022, and this one is for adoption. And um, uh, somebody uh, like to move that, Councillor Kroll, uh, Councillor Diandrad. Um, and just for um, Colton and Evie's information, this just enables us to carry on uh, for the year. We don't necessarily borrow this money. We just have the ability to borrow this money. So this is authorized. It's kind of an annual program where we uh, authorize uh, the borrowing of the funds if they are needed by the community. So uh, I don't think we borrowed them at all last year. And in fact, I don't know when we last borrowed them. So, Director of Finance, have we ever borrowed them? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Not, not since I've been at the town, no. Yeah, but it's just, uh, it just enables us to do that. If there were emergency or some emergency need that we hadn't anticipated, we have that ability put in place. So thank Definitely. you. Definitely. Yeah, it's good to have in place just in case. Yeah. Thank you. So all in favor of adoption? Thank you. That's passed. And the financial plan amendment bylaw number 28901-2021. And Director of Finance will let you introduce this. Thank you, Mayor. So on May May 5th uh, this year, Council adopted the financial plan bylaw 1289-2021, uh, and this covers the period of 2021 through 2025. Uh, and since May 5th, um, several grant funded projects have been awarded to the town and Council has also authorized additional expenditures for a variety of initiatives. And so the financial plan amendment bylaw 1289-01 it consolidates these changes into a, into a revised uh, financial plan document. So a total of just over $334,000 has been added to the original financial plan. And this reflects, as mentioned, grant awards, additional transfers from reserves and expenditures arising from specific events uh, and or new projects that have been um, directed from the council. And so I've listed on page one and two the uh, individual items that comprise that three hundred and thirty-five thousand uh, dollars. The main, the largest one is a combination of the grant award, grant funding that's been awarded to the town, total of two hundred fifty-five thousand dollars for grant award funding. And so the results of these changes are reflected in the amended uh, five-year financial plan, uh, the amended bylaw. And at this point, it's being presented to Council for three readings. And if that goes ahead, then it will be for adoption on the December 21st uh, Council meeting. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, Council, have any questions for that before we proceed? No questions? Okay. Then we have the uh, Town of Gibson's bylaw number 128901, a bylaw to amend 2021-2025 financial plan. Uh, you've heard the explanation. Um, and do the uh, motion is that it be given uh, three readings uh, tonight. Uh, someone would like to move uh, first, second, third reading. Councillor Kroll, second by Councillor Diandrad. Okay, all in favor of uh, three readings for second, third. Thank you. 
Okay, and we'll look forward to adopting that at our next meeting and all the details are there for you to see. Okay, um, we're there. We have no uh, unfinished business and no new business. Uh, no notice of motions. We'll go to inquiries next. Uh, anybody who has any inquiries, uh, please uh, come forward. Oh, we have one. Thank you. And we're being joined by Judith Bunkoff. Oh, okay. Judith, I'm not seeing you yet. There you are, yep. Welcome. Um, thank you very much. Good evening, councillors and mayor. Um, Thank you for letting me speak. Um, we just have, um, I know you're challenged for time, but I just want to um, speak to the, the, um, the reference. I'm, I'm referencing the application on North Road. I know you've already passed the application. Yeah. I understand that. I agree with Councillor um, um, Ladwick about our odd way of interpreting seaside character. Um, we are straying, straying as far as I'm concerned uh, to the point of creating a hodgepodge of anything goes, nothing, nothing identity. To me, it is almost our identities, you know, mixed up. So, I mean, it's not unusual in BC. I've seen it a lot of places. I'm disappointed about Gibson's. My question is why cannot this council um, create a shape, form and character committee to review proposal, proposals before they come, before they go, to, um, to the town, to the building department, et cetera. Almost like an application to apply um, kind of thing where um, the shape, form and character is considered for our town. I understand the upper Gibsons is different than lower Gibsons, I get it. Uh, but I certainly see a lot of, of weird stuff being proposed even for down where we call it seaside character. We don't have to look far. We can just look at our our, um, our harbor plan. There was a lot of great seaside character depicted in that plan. And I would like to see some action. Um, and I'm asking if, you know, you could consider um, striking up a committee that would maybe um, help us with defining, defining seaside character before it's too late. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity to ask the question. Thank you. It's certainly something I think council should consider. Uh, uh, let me ask you, are you talking about not a standing committee, but a committee that would report back to council, have a life, short-term life and report back to council? Well, that could be, you know, one thing as far as if it was set up, you know, that it was, it was a, you know, something was written down and it was easy to interpret. Um, but I guess, you know, either way, a standing committee or a division of, I mean, you have a, de a design committee now or advisory yeah. committee. And I noticed that's just, you know, starting again. I didn't go to the first, the meeting on uh, just last week. Um, but um, I don't know, somehow I just think that we are not addressing shape, form and character like we should be. And I, because I live in Heritage Hills, it's very important to me because that's one of the reasons that I found, you know, that's one of the things I found attractive about Gibson's and there's certainly a lot of examples throughout the Canada and the United States that, uh, you know, have kept their shape, form and character. And I would really hope that we could, you know, struggle with this and come up with something that's, that's more um, amenable than what we've got right now. It's too hodgepodge. Yeah. We're getting just everything. Yeah. So it, it, I guess it would be up to you guys to figure out how to do it. Yeah. But I'm just suggesting something needs to be done. Yeah. Councillor Dean Dredd. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank yeah. I appreciate uh, Judy Bonkoff's uh, background uh, feedback. Sorry. Uh, I think before if, I think my original idea, and actually this has been in discussion for a long time, was to strike a committee to define form and character, and then once we define, council can vote, uh, or, or we put to the public and something. And then we have the definition because. If it, to strike a committee just to to go through the same process, the advisory committee 
uh, does already some sort of, of, of things like that. So I think defining is the issue. And we were going to have this in the OCP amendment. That was one of the, but we didn't get there. So I, uh, I would love to be involved with this in, in a committee, for example, to define, right? And we can get uh, different people di that has uh, background and, and, and after they come up with things, we can run to the community. I think could be a process that may work. Uh, Councillor Ludwig. Um, if the capacity was there, I would support us striking a, a select committee, which would be, like you said, Mayor Beamish, yeah. a short period of time to uh, unpack our form and character guidelines um, and, and, and try to come up with recommendations for a council to consider. And I would like to participate in that for what that's worth of staff. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to do that tonight, but let's not forget yeah. that and bring that back at uh, uh, another meeting and, and have that conversation with our planners. That would how best to do that. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any further questions? Okay, seeing none, I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. Uh, we're going to now take a motion to adjourn. Councillor Kroll, thank you. Councillor oh, Ludwig, thank you. All in favor of adjournment? Oh, okay. sorry. No, we've got mo we've got in camera. No, it's nine thirty. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All in favor of adjournment? Do you have to have me there to adjourn to go to the end? Like, could I? You still it has to be unanimous. No. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. No. Okay. So the, the issues that we talked about earlier today will come back two weeks from now. Okay. So, and thank you, Evie and uh, and uh, Colton, uh, very much for your participation tonight. And uh, great mm -hmm. seeing you. It doesn't always go this late. We will make sure you have agendas in the future. That uh, I thought you were getting them. I thought there was a way you were getting them. So we'll just make sure that uh, they come through. And you, if you. Uh, Maybe through the corporate officer, let her know if you want them emailed you to you directly or through the uh, youth counselor uh, email, uh, which I sometimes use, assuming that somebody's looking at it. So, so that okay. The youth uh, counsel email hasn't worked for some time. Okay. I it doesn't bounce back of, to me. Yeah. One of the many IT issues that hopefully will be resolved. Okay. Yeah. In the of time. Okay. Um, counselor Dean Dredd? It's just a question if we could uh, perhaps if perhaps uh, Councillor Ledwig would agree. I, I know the next meeting can take like less than 10 minutes because we already discussed. I, I'm just wondering if it's possible. If we wrap it up in five minutes, we can do it. I just, I can't go. Can't, look, uh, I, I've not seen anything wrapped up in five minutes tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. All day. And, and so that, I mean, we keep doing that to ourselves. Uh, and, uh, and we keep having lengthy conversations about things that probably shouldn't be discussed on a Tuesday night in a council room. So, so we'll have to deal with that. So, um, yeah, we'll uh, be back here in two weeks. So, thank you very much, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Colton. Thank you.